Nope. Nope, okay, if I keep messing with it, I'm just gonna end up with pink hair or something. It's not even that bad, it's actually kinda nice, so whatever. Anyway, where did we leave off last week? Oh, okay, I was just about to talk about color, which is a topic that I've been teasing for well over a year. I plan on doing a full episode on color, if not multiple, in the future, so for any of you psych majors out there, please don't jump at me for simplifying this for now. Alright, so let's get on with it. There are 10 types of colorblindness, the most horrifying of which is one that I brought up in the last video. Achromatopsia, which is the lack of color vision. This is when you only have rods. The wavelengths for rods are extremely broad. It basically amounts to yes there is light or no there isn't. There's virtually no definition and everything appears either extremely bright or extremely dark. People who have this often have photophobia, which is the fear of light. And hopefully you understand why. If you had this, you probably wouldn't want to go outside either. So let's move out of this nightmare and talk about something a little more reasonable. Like when the world looks like this. There are two ways this can occur. The first is called cortical achromatopsia, when you have damage to area V4 or the color center of the brain. You still have all three cones, so sensation is working fine, but it's perception that's not working. It's not a hardware issue, it's a software issue. But if you only have one cone, it is a hardware issue known as cone mono monochromacy? Monochromacy. I really don't like that term because it's kind of misleading. It implies one color when obviously this is no color. But it's a way to differentiate between having one cone and having no cones, so... Fine. Since you're supposed to have three cones, there are three flavors to cone monochromacy. Red cone monochromacy is the most rare form in humans, but it's the most common form in the animal kingdom, especially for low light or nocturnal hunters, like dolphins, seals, and ferrets. Oh no, not this again. Nope. Can you talk? Why would he be British though? It's a common myth that dogs only see in black and white. They don't. They see in color because they're dichromats and have two cones. If you only have one, when different wavelengths of light hit your eye, it excites the cone cell a little, then a lot, then a little again. And that's it. So it's just shades of gray. But if you have two, your brain can decipher between a little of this, a lot of this, a little of this and a little of that, a lot of that, and a little of that. And because of that, dichromats can differentiate between different wavelengths of light and therefore see color. For the curious, dogs are the opposite of ferrets. They only have blue and yellow cones, they don't have red. But speaking of blue and yellow, let's start with the rarest form of dichromacy in humans. Blue-yellow colorblindness. Which is... Look, these names are really dumb, okay? So we're gonna call it by its more scientific name, tritinopia, which is the lack of blue cones. Each of these dichromat forms of colorblindness has a diet version, in this case known as Tritonomaly, where they still have blue cones but they're shifted more towards green. So what does the world look like for a Tritonope? Well, as soon as I said the name I switched it, so like this. This is a normal color spectrum and this is the same color spectrum for a Tritonope. This might look a little weird to you because they're supposed to be missing the blue cone, but it kind of looks like they're missing the green cone and it's called blue-yellow colorblindness. Red-green colorblindness is far more common and only men can get it because it's on the sex-linked X chromosome. Women can get the light versions where you have a mutated cone, but the odds are so small that it's barely worth mentioning. You have to lose several rounds of the genetic lottery to be a colorblind female. There are two main types of red-green colorblindness and two anomalous or light versions. This is pro and it's when you're missing the red cone. This is as close to what a dog sees as we can get. Protonopes have blue cones and green cones, but everything looks blue and yellow to them. Everything looks kind of drab because they're not able to see red, green, or pu. Oh no. I knew it. I knew this was gonna happen. Whatever, if I just ignore it, maybe it'll go away. Does this look normal to you? What number do you see? Because if this looks normal and you see any number at all, like maybe a two? Congratulations! You have deuteranopia, which is the lack of green cones. Again, only men can get this, but it's the light version that is far and away the most common, with more than all other forms of colorblindness put together. It's called deuteranomaly, or anomalous colorblindness, or color deficiency, and it's when the green cone is mutated and shifted more towards red. Their color spectrum looks mostly normal, maybe a little more brown than usual, but there are a few notable colors missing. And here's where we can finally start talking about normal color vision, 
because it's not until you break it down that you can fully appreciate how it all works together. First, you need to discard anything that you think you know about color, especially if you learned it in art class. Light is not paint and doesn't work the same way like at all. The three primary colors of light are red, green, and blue, and from those you can make just about any other color. The monitor you're watching this on is made up of red, green, and blue pixels. A white pixel is when all three of them are lit up. The visible spectrum of light extends from 400 to 700 nanometers and looks like this. The visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is incredibly tiny, but we can get every single color within that spectrum with only three cones. How do you make orange without a yellow? With red and green. Oh yeah? Well, how do you make yellow? With red and green. All right, Hotshot, then how do you make purple? Good question. Purple is not a real color. It's a pigment on the color wheel from when red and blue meet up again. But the visible spectrum isn't a wheel. It's a straight line, and red never wraps back around. There is no wavelength that corresponds to purple. It exists as a combination and a conjuring of your mind. Purple is not a natural color. Think about it. What in nature is purple? Your mind probably jumped to grapes, which... No, they're called red grapes. The main reason you think grapes are purple is because purple candy is usually grape. Unless you live in the UK where it's black currant. Most of you have never heard of black currant because it's illegal here in the US. Red and blue are the two most important types of cones that you have. They're so important that they're the most common type of opposing color circuit. What do you mean you don't know what an opposing color circuit is? <laughs> Fine. In your retina, you have single cells, which are pretty self-explanatory. It's a red cone that fires when it's activated by red light, or a green cone that fires when it's activated by green light. And then you have cones that are connected to each other in what are called opposing color circuits. The most common is red and blue. Stare at the Mona Lisa's nose while I drone on about how this works. Right now, blue light is hitting your retina and causing the blue end of the circuit to fire. Think of it like a seesaw. It starts out level with the ground, but as more time goes on, the blue end gets pushed down. Eventually, the blue end will hit the bottom and your retina will actually start to bleach out. If you've ever stared at the sky for a long enough time, you've seen this happen, where it slowly starts to fade out to white. And then when the weight is lifted off of the blue end of the seesaw, the red end fires and you see the after image. I'm sorry, I'm sure that freaked you out, but I totally meant to do that. If you close your eyes right now, you can still see the after image. So what happens when red and blue are activated at the same time, and the seesaw is pushed down equally on both ends? Here are the cone sensitivities for red and blue. Red's sensitivity extends far into blues, so what happens here at the end of the spectrum? Both are activated, so what color do you see? Purple, or more accurately, violet. But what about here? Again, both are activated, but surely you're not seeing violet again for a completely different wavelength. And you're not. And this is why you have that third cone, the green cone. When red and blue are both activated, but so is green, you see green. When red and blue are both activated, but there is no green, you see purple. Remember earlier when I said that deuteranomalous people have some notable absences on their color spectrum? I was talking about purple. Because their green cone is mutated and shifted towards red, there is no point where green is activated more than red and blue. So their brain just makes up for that by discarding purple. Because purple is a figment of your imagination. Pigment? Pigment of your imagination. Anyway, this is an approximation of violet, and this is purple. So how come in pictures of rainbows, the last color is purple, and not violet? Haven't you been paying attention? Because a camera, and this monitor, and even your eye are only made up of RGB. The color right here is not violet. It's a combination of a red pixel and a blue pixel, which tricks your eyes into seeing both red and blue without any green. Just like what violet does, so your brain perceives purple. I understand that this may seem like a difficult concept, so the next time you see a rainbow, take note of the color after blue. Then take a picture of it and look at the picture. They will look completely different. So as a trichromat with three cones, you can see every color on this spectrum, including colors that are completely made up by your mind like purple and pink. They're not on there. Which by the way is how I know that this is the only genuine video of a guy wearing those Enchroma color correcting glasses. It's pink. <laughs> yes, it's, it's pink. What color is that one? It's green. Yes. Oh my God, James. Is this purple? Yes. 
What the f- So not only are there no repeats along the spectrum, but you see colors that aren't even there. Looking at the cone sensitivities again, anywhere along the spectrum, with three variables, every wavelength activates cones a little differently. A colorblind dichromat will have several repeats along their spectrum because there are several wavelengths that activate cones in the same way. A dichromat can differentiate about 10,000 different colors, while a trichromat can see up to 10 million. So can a tetrachromat really see 100 times more colors than a normal human? No, pop science articles just write that because the first three cones increase the amount of perceived colors by an order of magnitude, so surely the fourth must too. A tetrachromat is something that was blown up by pop science after... after this. Here we go. A tetrachromat is someone who has four color cones, but their visible range is still 400 to 700 nanometers. It's no bigger than anyone else's, so they don't see any colors outside of the spectrum that a normal person like you or I don't. That's right, I'm not colorblind, I just choose to dress this way. Oddly enough, there are people who can see outside of the normal color spectrum, and they're still trichromats. The lens on your eye filters out ultraviolet light. You can't see it. But there are people out there who've had their lens removed, so now the filter is gone and they can see UV light. What does it look like? Not like this. I mean, these are UV lights, but neither the camera nor your eyes can see UV. So what's all this then? Ultraviolet light is what gives you sunburns. These are the same lights that are used in tanning beds, just with a purple party filter. Why is there a purple party filter? For the same reason gasoline smells like gasoline, it's just there to let you know that these are UV lights. So what does it really look like? People have described it as a whitish violet, which that sounds like an awesome new color. I know it'll eventually burn out my retinas, but that's something I would like to see. So where is their fourth cone? Here. It's a yellow cone. It doesn't extend the spectrum, it doesn't add any new dimension that wasn't already there. All of the colors on a tetrachromat's color spectrum are the same as a normal color spectrum. There are no repeats and every wavelength has its own unique combination of cone activations. It doesn't add anything new. So why did all those people see the dress as white and gold? I don't know, maybe it has something to do with why Oklahoma has a panhandle, but I can tell you what it doesn't have anything to do with. Tetrachromacy. That stupid dress convinced way too many people that they're tetrachromats because everyone wants to feel special, so people put out their junk science videos or directed you to a color vision test loaded with ads. Here's one from a news website. How many unique colors can you count on this rainbow? Go ahead and pause the video and count if you're so inclined. But according to the article, if it's fewer than 20, you're a dichromat, like 25% of the population. Nope, I've given you the math from real sources. It's less than 10%. If you see between 20 and 32, you're a trichromat. Fine, like 50% of the population, 90% of the population. And if you see between 33 and 39 plus, you're a tetrachromat, like 25% of the population. Where, where do I even start? There are 44 colors on that stupid rainbow, so even if you only got half of them right, you're still not colorblind. Somehow, whatever. I know I keep repeating this, but this screen and the pixels on it are RGB. It cannot test whether or not you are a tetrachromat. In fact, there is no test you can take at home to find out if you are a tetrachromat. If I hold up a lemon and look at it, yellow wavelength light is hitting my retina, which is activating the red and green cones. When you look at this lemon on screen, it's showing you red and green pixels, which tricks your brain into perceiving yellow. The only way to test if you're a tetrachromat is to go to a lab, where they will shine yellow wavelength light into your eyes that will activate a cone more than it activates red and green. And then that same cone doesn't activate when your eyes are shown the red and green combination that usually tricks your brain into seeing yellow. You cannot do this at home. So here's what a tetrachromat can do that you can't. This is yellow. You and a tetrachromat both see this and both agree that this is yellow. This is also yellow. You see it and call it yellow, maybe even the same yellow as before, and the tetrachromat says, hmm, it's actually an ever so slightly more bluish or greenish version of that yellow. Oh wow, what an amazing superpower. I'm so blown away that you have this special superhuman gift. You see both colors and just call them both yellow. If you look hard enough, you might see a difference. The tetrachromat just has an easier time differentiating yellows. Do they see more colors? No, but they do have a slightly easier time differentiating between two similar colors. Wow, such epic power! How many people have that power? Less than... less? Fewer. Fewer than a dozen. That's it. 
fewer than a dozen. I'm not even gonna read that as a percentage because the amount of zeros would just irritate you. 12% of women carry the fourth cone, but it's not connected to anything and it's not in use. It's just like having a firewire port. It's just there, never to be used. Those are called dormant or non-functional tetrachromats, but fewer than a dozen women have them connected and in use, and they're known as functional tetrachromats. There are no male tetrachromats, functional or otherwise. It's genetically impossible for a male to be a tetrachromat because that fourth cone is sex-linked. In order to have four cones, you have to have two X chromosomes. So if you're a guy who thinks that you're a tetrachromat, you're either misinformed, lying, or your parents are keeping a really terrible secret from you. Or I guess you're the first ever, a scientific miracle, congratulations. Is having more cones really all that beneficial? Like what about those animals with 12 cones, like the mantis shrimp? Do they see colors that we could never even dream of? Imagine a color that you can't even imagine. Now do that nine more times. That is how a mantis shrimp do. No, they don't experience the world as some colorful paradise. Here is the wavelength graph for all of the mantis shrimp's 12 cones. Again, they are all within the same visible spectrum that we see. But there's an additional problem. With so many cones, there are multiple wavelengths that activate every cone. At the peaks, they definitely see the color that you would expect, but in the valleys, it becomes a muddled gray mess. A human with three cones can distinguish colors one to four nanometers apart. A mantis shrimp with its 12 cones can't distinguish anything less than 25 nanometers apart. So for example, these two colors, you can tell them apart pretty easily, but a mantis shrimp can't. So is having four cones the next step in human evolution? No, because it's not beneficial. You only need three to see the entire spectrum. It's also not detrimental, which is why it isn't selected out, which is the same reason why dichromats aren't selected out. While it kind of sucks that you can't see purple and everything else looks a little bit more brown than it should, you can still get around just fine. I mean, you can't tell the difference between these two apples, which is fine, but if they were berries, this would be the difference between a delicious snack and a fatal illness. Luckily, we're social animals, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Keen-eyed viewers might have noticed a similarity between the yellow cone of a tetrachromat and the mutated green cone of a deuteranomalous male, and that's because they are the same. You get your red and green cones from your mom. The blue cone is not sex-linked, it's a completely different chromosome. So if you are a dormant tetrachromat female, you have a 50-50 chance of having a colorblind son. If you are one of the 6% of deuteranomalous males, Males. That means that your mom is one of the 12% of non-functional tetrachromats and gave you the mutated green cone. Just another thing you can blame on your mom. So is that why some people see the dress as white and gold rather than black and blue like it really is? Because they're tetrachromats or dichromats? No. Another theory that was floating around at the same time was that people saw it as white and gold because they had a blue color deficiency. Even if that were true, that means you would always see blue as white. If I pointed at the sky and asked you what color it was, you would say white, but you don't. You say blue. Why would the dress be white but the sky is still blue? Because your color deficiency only affects internet memes? Having fewer cones doesn't decrease color perception, but it does decrease visual clarity. You see the dress as white and gold because you interpret the background contrast differently. For whatever reason, you take the brightness of the background to mean that the dress is a different color than it really is. Please never be an eyewitness. The fact that someone's life may hang on the fact that you can't tell the difference between black and blue and white and gold is terrifying. So the next time someone tells you that a tetrachromat sees a hundred times more colors than you, or that you're a tetrachromat because you see this dress as white and gold, or these shoes as white and pink, not again. Hopefully now, you'll know better. There you go, the color episode. Are you colorblind? Are you a tetrachromat? Or are you just boring like everyone else? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to colorize that subscribe button. In the meantime, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and join the conversation on the subreddit.